Are you ready for the most anticipated matchup of this entire FCS dynasty? Number three, Bryant, 12-0, taking on the number one, 12-0, Savannah State Tigers. This is a humongous matchup, and I cannot wait for this game to happen. Noel Montanez at quarterback. Cy Summers, LJ Topher, Ruben Blueberry, Brandon Allen, Heisman contender. This is going to be a fantastic game. I cannot wait for the kickoff to start it off. I know you guys are excited. Everybody's been waiting for this game to happen. There's a lot at stake today. Either Brandon Allen or MJ Gator Jr. will walk away with the Heisman after this ball game. And the winner of this game will also go on to take on the Fresno State Bulldogs in the national championship game. In year one, it's going to be crazy to have one of our schools playing for a national championship year one of this dynasty. I don't think it's going to happen next year. I think with a lot of recruiting, it's going to be a lot harder to go perfect all the way until your conference title game. Let's take a look at the Tigers roster. Matt Meeks, Cody Lee Jr., Chris Numa, Jeremy Carroll. He's been slanging the tater all season long. And head coach Seth Maddox had this to say before the game. He said, Bryant is an amazing team in their own right. They are number three for a reason. They have home run talent at every position, and this is going to be our toughest test yet. I think their coach deserves all the praise in the world. He has done a phenomenal job this season. The drill isn't over, though. Defense must play their best all season. The offense has to keep hitting on all cylinders. If we don't play a complete game, we won't win the ACC. I'm not even caring about the bowl game, national championship game right now. It's one game at a time, same way with the players. And MJ is no different. He hears all the talking and sees it on social media and on ESPN and magazines, but he stays making sure that he's prepared each week. Jeremy needs to sling that tater like he's allergic to them this Saturday. If we play as a team and not as individuals, we will be just fine. I'm proud of this team and love them regardless, but we must finish the drill against Bryant. Say less. Always great chatting with the head coach of Savannah State every single week. And good luck to you, sir. Good luck to Bryant as well in this game. Hopefully everybody stays healthy. I do have Savannah State coming away with a win. Greetings from EA Sports. Nestler and alongside me are so in Kirk Herbstreet. A mild, clear day is what we'll have for the Bulldogs and the Tigers. Expect both teams to leave it all on the field as today's winner will be crowned conference champion. And here come Tigers. If you compare these teams on paper, they really look to be pretty equal. Kirk, what do you think? The home team knows all too well about playmakers as they have one of their own at the running back position. This guy's got way too much talent to be contained. Lee, I think he'll lead them to a close victory. I gotta have to go with them too. I really guys are gonna do it. So the number three Bryant Bulldogs getting no love today in the predictions. But I do think it's gonna be a close game. I think Bryant is a fantastic squad. They have a great defense. Divine Adams, Ruben Blueberry. I mean that defensive line is so great. And it's just two players. But I just think Savannah State is having a great season. A little bit better than Bryant's. Except for that New Hampshire game, that was insane. And Bryant's already starting off with a penalty here. Clipping from Harper. So instead of their own 35, they'll start off at the 16-yard line. And we will see the offense for Bryant, which looks like this. Noel Montanez under center at quarterback. Brandon Allen and A.J. Jordan at halfback. Both over 1,000 yards rushing. Allen over 2,000 for the year. LJ Topher and Snoopy Tucker at wide receiver and Montanez will throw it quick over the middle to the tight end for an eight or nine yard pickup. And to round out the offense, Kenneth Harrington at left tackle, 91 pancakes on the season and two sacks allowed. He's in the award watch list for best offensive lineman. And the Bulldogs come out in shotgun formation again. Montanez. Gonna hand it off, Brandon Allen's got it, he fumbles the football, oh my goodness, what a hit. Only the third fumble of the season for Brandon Allen, let's take a look and see who forced it, oh my goodness, what a hit by the non-subscriber defensive tackle, woof. And the defense for Savannah State looks like this, Kyle Rose at defensive end, Rayshawn Griffin at middle linebacker, Chris Numa, the star cornerback, and Cody Lee Jr at three safety and they are the number four defense in the nation allowing only 249 
per game. Third down and three. Huge play already to start things off. Johnson is in the shotgun. He's going to hand it off. Allen is taken down short of the marker. Great play by Vincent. The non-subscriber defensive end that's going to bring up fourth and two. And we're going to get a chance early to see the Savannah State Tigers offense. I'm not 100% sure, but I do believe this is the first college football game ever with two running backs over 2,000 yards playing against each other. And here is Chris Numa on the punt return up past the 40. Chris Numa is gone. Oh my goodness, to start things off, Chris Numa to the house, his sixth punt return for a touchdown this season. Oh my goodness. Fireworks already. And the Tigers take the lead. Wow, he's so fast. Six punt returns for touchdowns. Wow. Insane. Of course, he doesn't have any kick returns for touchdowns this season. But he's just been great on defense as well. Nine interceptions this year. 34 tackles, three for a loss. He has three pick sixes, so he has nine touchdowns. Playing corner. And none of them are on offense. He also has 16 deflections and a forced fumble on the season. Chris Numa, you are a stud, my friend. Right back deep to return, LJ Topher. And let's see who this is. Brandon Allen on the return. And gets it up to about the 22-yard line. Let's see if he can get a couple carries here without fumbling the football away. This video is about an hour and one minute long, a little bit less than that, so get your popcorn ready. Montanez in the shotgun already on this drive. To start things off, quick pass, right side caught, and that is a first down pickup for McCoy, the non-subscriber wide receiver. He is the number two receiver, and uh, Snoopy Tucker will be playing in the slot. He's very quick. Second down and inches. They could do anything on this play. From the shotgun. Allen to the right of Montanez. They're going to hand it off to him up the middle. He's got the first down. And that's it. He only picks up one yard. So he's back to zero yards rushing for the game. We haven't even had a chance to take a look at the Bryant defense or the Tigers offense yet. But we'll get to it. Don't you worry. Montanez under center. He's going to toss it out, and oh my goodness, Brandon Allen dropped for another loss. Vincent, again, putting the pressure on the halfback. Second down at 13. Ground game not working so far for Bryant, and that was one of the main concerns I had going into this game, is Brandon Allen and A.J. Jordan are huge parts of this offense. If they can't get it going, can the Bulldogs rely on Noel Montanez to throw the football here? And that pass is somehow caught. Oh my goodness. Very dangerous, intended for LJ Topher. Bounces off his hands, could have been picked, but McCoy, Johnny on the spot for the reception. And now three consecutive completions for Montanez. That'll bring up third and manageable, third and five. They're number one in the nation on third down conversions at 59%. Their offense has been fantastic. They're gonna go with a draw play, and Brandon Allen is gonna be dropped for another loss. And that is Cody Lee Jr. on the tackle, his 50th on the season, and his second tackle for a loss this year. Bryant going to punt it away to the very dangerous Chris Numa. He's already took one back to the house today. Will they kick it away from him? If not, can they get some guys out there to tackle him? This is a very good kick. Oh, my goodness. Way downfield at the 14-yard line. And Cy Summers. Oh, my goodness. With a monstrous hit on Chris Noom on the sideline. Summers with his 78th tackle of the year, and he just absolutely just blasted him. Finally seeing the offense of Savannah State, and they're on top 7-0 here for the first time touching the field. Jeremy Carroll under center. MJ Gator Jr. in the backfield right now. They're going to hand it off to him, and he's dropped for a loss immediately. And Stefan Okafor, his 58th tackle of the year, 21st for a loss. Him and Cy Summers combined for 52 tackles for a loss. And I'm not even counting Divine Adams and Ruben Blueberry who have 40 together. Goodness gracious. 
99 tackles for loss for <laughs> four players. And there's pressure immediately intercepted. And that's going to be a pick six for the non-subscriber safety. Capers, his second pick of the year. What just happened? Pressure from Stefan Okafor. That pass was directly to Capers. So Bryant strikes back on defense. And again, I have yet to go over the offense for Savannah State or the defense for Bryant. It just happened so quick. Oh my goodness. Two very exciting plays already in this first quarter of this matchup. The most highly anticipated matchup of the season. And it's, it's already fantastic. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Let me know in the comments section below if you're enjoying it. And if you haven't already, hit that like button so more people can find this video. But this is just crazy. Crazy first quarter, I'd say. Back deep to return for Savannah State is going to be Zay Jones, who has three kick returns for touchdowns this season, and Chris Numa, who has zero kick returns for touchdowns this year. See if we can have some more fireworks here in the first quarter. And this kick will be to Zay Jones, I believe. And that is Zay. Going off the right sideline. Breaks a tackle. Breaks another one up to the 22-yard line. And sack on five yards for the face mask penalty. On Capers, who just has the touchdown. Oh, my goodness. Capers, what are you doing? Tigers will start the drive at the 27. Let's go over this offense quick before they uh, have a takeaway or something. Um, Evan Barber at halfback. MJ Gator Jr. at halfback. J.J. Barber is the backup quarterback. Here's a carry for the fullback, non-subscriber player. And at receiver, receiver is Zay Jones and Jarmel Lewis. Jarmel has been fantastic in run blocking this season. He's got over 500 yards receiving as well, which is actually number two on the team with 544. MJ Gator Jr. leads the team with 572. Carroll to hand it off. Evan Barber has dropped for no gain. He's got 442 on the season with five touchdowns. And to round out the offense for Savannah State, Matt Meeks at tight end coming into the game with 31 catches, 509 yards, five touchdowns. Bryant, number two defense in the land. They've been great all year. Cy Summers and Stefan Okafor, he's part of that. And here's a sack for Owens, the non-subscriber left end. That gets him 10 on the season. He has been an absolute beast. The offensive line, look at that. Great block on Ruben Blueberry, but it just wasn't enough. The offensive lines have not been able to contain this defensive line all year. You got Reuben Blueberry. You got Divine Adams. Those are subscriber players who are very dominant at their respective positions. Divine Adams with seven sacks. Blueberry with nine. And now Owens with ten. He leads the team. That is crazy. And here's a punt return for LJ Topher at his 38-yard line up the sideline. And inside the 40-yard line of Savannah State. The Bryant defense, man, it's looking nasty. Not sure if Savannah State can really get anything going. Their ground game has done nothing. Jeremy Carroll threw a pick six already, his eighth interception of the year. Montanus from the shotgun at the 36 yard line. And he will go play action. Right side, deflected away at the last second. Intended for a non subscriber receiver. My goodness. About to lose my voice here in the first quarter already. I don't know about you guys. I'm loving this game right now. There's so much at stake right now in this game. There's an offsides penalty. Defensive end jumped across the line. Seth Maddox not happy. His team not performing the way he wants them to. LJ Tilfer in there, bigger than all of the linemen. Oh my goodness. Except for uh No, he is bigger than Kenneth Harrington. LJ Tilfer stands at six foot six. Kenneth Harrington, the left tackle, is six five, and here is Tilfer with a one yard reception. That was fantastic. That gets him 910 yards receiving on the year on 36 catches. He has eight touchdowns as well. Five drops on the year. Not terrible, not great. Third down and four. Allen behind Montanez. They're going to toss it out. Allen's got some space. Left side. Breaks the tackle. Allen is gone. Touchdown, Bryant Bulldogs. 
And it looked like he stiff-armed Cody Lee Jr. The safety, he didn't stand a chance. That is a mismatch nightmare. It's never gonna end in Lee's favor. One-on-one -on -one with Brandon Allen, what a stiff arm. His 34th touchdown rush of the year. And counting his receiving touchdowns, that gives him 40 for the season. And tack one more on for his touchdown pass to LJ Topher in their last matchup with uh, the Southern Jaguars, I believe. 14 to seven, Bryant on top. They want it to be an all Bulldog national championship game to take on Fresno State. That would be crazy. But I'm pretty sure everybody in the Discord thinks Savannah State's gonna win this game. I don't know anybody on YouTube that thinks Bryant is gonna win this game either. My goodness. Very exciting first quarter of play. Not a lot of yards of offense so far. We had a pick six, we had a punt return for a touchdown. And then a nice punt return from LJ Topher set the Bulldogs up in great territory. And Brandon Allen finished off that drive. And he's closing in on 2,100 rushing yards. MJ Gator Jr., of course, 2,112 yards rushing this year, 29 touchdowns. He has seven fumbles, though. He definitely has to work on that. Tigers on offense. And they're going to go play action. Ruben Blueberry gets there. And Blueberry now has 10 sacks. He ties Owens for number one on the team. Oh, my goodness. But the defense for the Bulldogs looks like this. Devine Adams at defensive tackle. Ruben Blueberry, defensive end. Stephon Okafor and Cy Summers at the outside linebacker spots. And the fullback goes nowhere here. And Tadian Moss at cornerback. He has six picks on the season. And the Bulldogs take the lead into the second quarter. 14-7. I did not expect that to happen. Third down and 12 for the Tigers. Their offense has done diddly-poo nothing so far in the first half. Carroll to slang the tater. Pressure. Throws it deep. Almost intercepted. That was intended for Jarmel Lewis. My goodness. That was a very dangerous pass. I think Tatum, the other safety over there, almost had the pick. Great diving effort by him. The Tigers punting the football away again. LJ Topher on the return here. And he's going to go up the right sideline. Back Jukes gets inside Tiger territory. So great field position, yet again. See if Bryant can't add to their lead here. Montanez coming out under center. Allen right behind him, one tight end. Montanez will hand it off, Allen right up the middle. And he'll pick up maybe four yards, four or five. Not a bad start to the drive. If you guys are not in the Discord channel yet, I will post a link in the chat. And I will also post one in the comment section below. I'd love to see as many of you guys in there as possible. Great pass out to Snoopy Tucker. His first catch today, 26th on the year. And they get a first down out of it to the 34-yard line. We have 67 members in the Discord channel currently as I am doing my commentary for this video. Negative 10 yards of offense for Savannah State. What? Oh my goodness. Single back set again. Allen back there. And they're going to throw it. Montanez pressured. He's going to be sacked. And that is Baker, the non-subscriber outside linebacker, averaging almost 10 tackles per game and almost one sack per game on the year. That guy has been a monster for the Tigers. Blue pass, the right guard, Brandon Allen, did not move over to help block for him. And it resulted in a sack. Second down and 14. But if you guys want a sneak peek at seven of the eight teams that I've revealed so far for the Professional Football League in Madden 2006, go ahead and join that Discord. All those teams are in there. Another completion out to Snoopy Tucker at the marker. Do they give him the first down? They do not. Third down and inches. But we do have a pro league coming soon. 
In Madden 06, our subscriber players will have professional football careers. We're going to have crazy drafts. I will be user controller, controlling every single team in the Pro League. So I can make anything happen for you guys. Just about. Of course, you know, game limitations and whatnot. Brandon Allen dropped for a loss by Rayshon Griffin. Oh my goodness. That's going to bring up fourth down and two. Big stop for Griffin. And that's going to be his 48th pack of this season. And Bryant is going to send on the offense still. This is a gutsy call. Shotgun set. Snoopy Tucker in the slot to the bottom of the screen. Allen in the backfield. And they will throw it. Nope, Montanez, quarterback draw. He falls forward, picks up the first down. Huge fourth down conversion for Bryant. They're controlling the clock today. And we saw this yesterday in the VMI for South Dakota State Jackrabbit football game. VMI absolutely controlled the clock and dominated the Jackrabbits in that matchup. And it looks like Bryant is trying to go for the same. Oh my goodness, Brandon Allen breaking the tackle. Still going inside the 10 yard line. First and goal as he reaches 2,088 yards rushing. Second in the country, only behind MJ Gator Jr., but he is number one for touchdowns. But it looks like Bryant is following the blueprint of VMI right now. And they are fourth in the country in red zone scoring 92%. And got them set again. Allen gets the carry. Taken down by Kyle Rose. That's his 36th tackle. And oh no, Brandon Allen has injured his shoulder on the play. I hope he's able to come back in this game. Of course, the Bulldogs are pretty good at halfback. They got A.J. Jordan, who's coming into this game with 1,108 yards rushing, 16 touchdowns. He also has eight catches, 223 yards and a touchdown on the season. Only one fumble, so he's been fantastic as well. So I don't think this offense will really miss Brandon Allen too much as A.J. Jordan punches it in for the touchdown. His 17th touchdown run this season. That is more than most starting halfbacks in the country. Bryant going to take a 21-7 lead here in the second quarter. But I don't think the Bulldogs will miss Allen too much if he doesn't come back. I think A.J. Jordan is definitely a capable running back who can start for any team in the nation. Bulldogs, shocking the world right now, 21-7. My goodness, I did not expect this to happen. Now the way I record these games, the subscriber versus subscriber games, I, I hit record and I leave the room, so I don't see anything that happens until I actually go in here to do the commentary for these games. So, this is the first time I'm seeing it as I'm calling the game. And that's the only way you should do it. Because how else am I going to be excited if I've already seen a play before? And here's Numa. <laughs> I can't believe he took it out from that far deep in the end zone. And he got it up to the 21. So he gets his offense an extra one yard for this drive. Let's see if the Tigers can't get into the positive side of offensive yards. They are at negative 10 currently. And that is pitiful. Brandon Allen, luckily for the Bulldogs, will return. So his Heisman chances are still there. Gator Jr. gets a carry, breaks a tackle. His first positive gain of the year, or of the, of the year, oh my goodness, of the game. That gets him four yards. I'm not sure what he had before that carry, but he's probably near zero right now. Second down and six, Carroll under center. Matt Meeks to the right, and Gator Jr. picks up maybe three yards. Owens on the tackle. And that'll bring up third down and three. Definitely a manageable situation for Savannah State. This offense has been lights out all season long, but they have not faced a defense like Bryant this year. Cy Summers, Stephon Okafor sending their defense in their direction that they want, but MJ Gator Jr. is going to pick up the first down anyway. The outside linebackers trying to direct their defensive linemen to certain gaps, and they just couldn't fill it. MJ with a first down. And if I'm not mistaken, that is the first first down of the game for Savannah State. And we're just over two minutes left in the first half, so <laughs> not very good for the offense. And I'm sure head coach Seth Maddox is going to rip them a new one in the locker room at halftime. 
Evan Barber gets a carry left side. Gets the first down, 11 yard pickup. And Savannah State with 13 yards on the ground now. They're definitely in the positive yardage now. Took them almost a whole half <laughs> to get positive offensive yards. Carroll under center. Evan Barber still in at halfback. Carroll, deep shot, left side. Deflected away by Tadian Moss against Zay Jones. That's going to be a great matchup all game. Tadian Moss, a shorter uh, cornerback. He's 5'10", 177 pounds. He'll be going up against Zay Jones, who is 6'1", 195 pounds. So he has a few inches on him. Nice little advantage. Uh, but I do think Tadian Moss can stand up with anybody. He is a beast at corner. He reminds me a lot of Bob Sanders. I know Bob Sanders is a safety, but just their play styles are very similar. Deep shot, out of bounds, not a good throw. And intended for Zay Jones again. Carroll testing Tadian Moss. I don't suggest <laughs> testing him for a third straight play. Third down and 10. Savannah State, one of three today on third downs. One of four are the Bulldogs. In the shotgun, and the right guard steps forward for false start penalty. So some mental mistakes now. And that's going to make it third down and 15. Not an ideal situation for the Tigers. They don't really have uh, deep threats at all on this offense. So they, they've been really <laughs> relying heavily on MJ Gator Jr. In the ground game in the pass game, and there he is right there, right on cue. To the 39-yard line, just right out of the backfield. Great route in between half of the defense for Bryant. Fantastic reception, and that's going to be his 25th on the season. And he is closing in on 600 yards receiving this year. I think that's really the only advantage that MJ has over Brandon Allen, and that is receiving yards and touchdowns. And he's another reception down the right sideline. Is number 84, I believe that's Schmidt. He was wide open. Not sure what the cornerback's doing right there. Taking a nap, perhaps. But they're inside the red zone now. Tigers threatening. They need a touchdown here to get back within one touchdown. Let's see if they don't target Jarnell Lewis. Big receiver, 6'3", 200 pounds. And he's a smart player build, so his catch rating is a little bit higher than his physical ratings. And here is Gator Jr. getting dropped for... One yard. He's had a rough time running the football today. He's probably the fastest player in the nation at halfback. Or at least the fastest halfback all around. They got to get him some carries to the outside. And here's an opportunity. But he pitches it late. And Tadian Moss comes up and makes the tackle. Tadian Moss, a great tackler at cornerback. And he showed it right there against the Heisman uh, front runner currently. That's going to be third down and seven. Now 10 plays, 64 yard drive, 215 off the clock as we head under a minute left to play in the half. Carroll, quarterback draw. Oh my goodness, what are they thinking? On third and seven, Carroll goes nowhere. That was an awful play call. I'm not sure what they were thinking right there. And now they're going to have to settle for a 31 yard field goal attempt with Muhammad who has missed a handful of kicks this year. A couple of them very badly were missed. And they're going to run this clock down as much as possible before they kick it. So they don't leave Bryant with any time on the clock. The kick is up, and Muhammad gets it through the uprights. 12th place, 65-yard drive, 2.53 off the clock. The Bulldogs with an 11-point lead. They will most likely just run one play and go into the half with a two-score lead over the number one Savannah State Tigers. Tigers facing a little bit of adversity today. They haven't really been down at the half too often. I think just one time this year, maybe twice. But not against an opponent like Brian. Here's Brandon Allen on the kick return down at the 17 yard line. Not a good kick return. He has been on kick returns all season long. He doesn't have any touchdowns. Doesn't really broke a big one. So maybe for year two we'll look to T. 
take him off of kick return and give somebody else an opportunity. First and 10 from the shotgun. And Montanez will hand it off to Allen. And he's going to get taken down for a loss of two yards on the play. Rayshawn Griffin on the tackle for a loss, his 14th of the season. He also has two sacks, two picks, 10 deflections, and a fumble recovery. And that is the final play of the first half, guys. Shocker. Oh, my goodness. This is definitely not what I was expecting to happen. I know you guys... Luckily for Savannah State, they do return the second half kickoff, though. So they have a nice chance here. Get a touchdown. You're only going to be down by four points. Chris Numa back to return with Zay Jones. They're both dangerous. I know Chris Numa does not have a kick return for a touchdown this year. But I, I won't count him out. And here he is. One yard deep in the end zone. He's going to be dragged down at the 21-yard line. Now, and there's a clipping. Oh, my goodness. On the fullback, Paul Carroll. And they're going to start this drive from the 10-yard line. So, apparently, Seth Maddox's uh, pep talk at halftime did nothing for this team. And that is very unfortunate. They only have 60 yards of offense. Bryant only with 102. Carroll under center. And they're going to go play action. Carroll, quick pass to Matt Meeks. And he'll catch it for maybe three yards or four. And they'll give him three on that play. So not, not really a good play right there. Only three-yard pickup. Matt Meeks with his 32nd catch on the year. And he's got 512 yards. Second down and seven. And the shotgun. Carroll to throw it again. Pressured, and that's picked off again. Oh, my goodness. Is that Coleman? It is Coleman. Coleman, of course, had a couple interceptions in the last game that we saw. And that was just not a good route. Was that the full? I think that was the fullback, Paul Carroll, out there. I don't know why Jeremy Carroll would throw him the football. They are of no relation. It's not like he's trying to get his brother the football. That was not good. Oh, my goodness. And now Bryant at the 17-yard line of Savannah State in prime position to take an even bigger lead. Montanez to the end zone. Almost picked off by Chris Numa. Oh, that would have been huge. Montanez was absolutely destroyed as he threw the football. That'll bring up second down and 10. Bryant. 92% in the red zone this year. 47 touchdowns, 5 field goals. And they will hand it off. Brandon Allen runs over a player and gets rocked. Take another look at that hit. Oh my goodness. Is that Vincent, the defensive end? Whew. Man. So other than Brandon Allen's touchdown run, he really hasn't done that much in this game. Third down and 10 for the Bulldogs at the 17-yard line. Montanez to throw it. Stepping up in the pocket. Throws to the end zone. Out of the back of it. Looking for LJ Tilford just out of his reach. Not a good throw if you're throwing just out of the reach of your 6'6 six six wide receiver. Montanez looking like Cam Newton on that play. 34-yard field goal attempt for Bryant. So give them a two touchdown lead. The kick is up and it is good. 24 to 10 is the score. Tigers down two touchdowns to the number three Bryant Bulldogs. Still plenty of time. 518 left to go here in the third quarter. And Savannah State with so much firepower on that offense. All they really need is MJ, and they can get it done. But they got to get him going on the ground. He's got a couple receptions here in the game, but nothing in the ground game. And Chris Numa's going to down this in the end zone. And there's no flag on this kick return. So they will start the drive at the 20-yard line. And 
MJ in the backfield, Carroll under center. They're going to hand it off to MJ. Stefan Okafor lays him out. And he's going to lose several yards. That'll bring up second and 13. As Stefan Okafor comes through unblocked for his 22nd tackle for a loss. My goodness. That ties Divine Adams with tackles for loss on the team. And here is Evan Barber. He's had two great runs today. Maybe they should keep him in there. As he gets the 470 on the ground this year. He's got 28 yards rushing today. And that is more than the rest of the team combined. Tigers only 77 yards of offense. Of course, these are two top five defenses in the country. So it's to be expected that we're going to see a defensive battle, but with all the weapons on offense for both teams, I expected a little bit more yardage. These defenses are playing the best they've played all season long when it comes to yards given up. Second down and six. Carroll going to come out under center. Matt Meeks to the top at tight end, and MJ at halfback. They will throw it, quick pass, almost intercepted. Stephon Okafor jumped that route so quick. Intended for Schmidt. Jeremy Carroll off his game big time today. He came into this game with 27 touchdowns, 7 picks, and 4 rushing touchdowns. 2,642 yards passing, but he's just not getting it done through the air today. 2 for 5 on 3rd down conversions. It's 3rd and 6. And it looks like they're going to go with a run here. No, nope, they're going to throw it. Carroll hit as he throws and almost picked off by Cy Summers. He gets a deflection. That's going to be his fourth pass deflection of the year. He came into this game with 77 tackles, 31 for a loss, 8 sacks, 3 interceptions, return for 70 yards, 1 pick 6, 3 deflections, 4 forced fumbles, and a fumble recovery. He's been a monster. LJ Telfer returns the punt up to the 31-yard line. And pretty good field position for the Bulldogs to start off. Looking to extend their lead to three scores. Who saw this coming? Who thought that the Tigers' offense would just be completely shut down? Not I. Not I. Montanez in the shotgun. Allen to his left, he'll go play action, passes, oh my goodness, the receiver was wide open, McCoy never saw the football. Wow, that was going to be a huge game for the Bulldogs offense. That'll bring up second down and 10 now, that was <laughs> just misfortune right there for Montanez, perfect throw, and terrible Attempt by the receiver, and there was a drop frame right there, but it's an incomplete pass. So that's going to bring up third down and 10 for Bryant. Also, let me know what you guys thought of the thumbnails for the three conference championship games. If you enjoyed those, I will do more like that next season. Montanez, deep shot, and it's caught by Snoopy Tucker. Did he get a foot down? No, he did not. Oh my goodness, I thought he dragged the foot. That's going to be 4th and 10 now for Bryant. Oh, I wish they showed a replay of that. My goodness. It really looked like he got his toe to drag on the sideline before it hit the white. Chris Numa on the punt return from the 21-yard line. Numa up the right sideline. He's got the speed. He's got blocking. Chris Numa is gone for the touchdown. His second today. Oh, my goodness. He now has 7 punt returns for touchdowns this season and he also has three pick sixes a cornerback with 10 touchdowns none on offense that is ridiculous wow that gives the Tigers a lot of momentum as we are closing in on three minutes to play here in the third quarter they're only down by a touchdown now plenty of game left Plenty of time for some more fireworks to happen. This game has been full of crazy plays. Not a lot of yards on offense, but some pretty decent points on that scoreboard right now. 
Savannah State on for the kickoff. LJ Telfer, Brandon Allen back to return for the Bulldogs. Allen from the six yard line, up the middle, jukes to the inside a little bit more. And he'll get it up to about the 28 yard line. 29 is where they called him down. See if the Tigers can get a stop here for their offense. Tie this bad boy up. Montanez to throw it. And throws it right side. Caught by the non-subscriber receiver. Wilcox, his first of the game. And that'll get him four yards. Bringing up second down and six for Bryant. I don't want this game to ever end. I want it to go to like ten overtimes. That would be amazing. Second down and six. Montanez will throw it again. Pressure goes right side. Snoopy Tucker, he's been all over the field today. And he gets, I think, his third reception of the ball game. Giving him 28 on the season. And I wish this game didn't have the, the number glitch for the outline. Because that gold on the outside of the black numbers for Bryant would look fantastic. Which is what it's supposed to be. First down to 10, Montanez under center, three backs behind him. He will throw it out of play action, and Snoopy Tucker is open again for the first down. You've got to be kidding me. They can't guard this guy. They need to take Chris Numa off of LJ Telfer and put him on the opposite side of Snoopy Tucker. Oh, my goodness. Savannah so State, they are lacking a subscriber player on that right side of the field, and here is a nice catch for McCoy. As he picks up only two yards, well, that's four consecutive completions for Noel Montanez. National Championship berth on the line. A Heisman on the line. Who wants it more, folks? Montanez to throw again, and that was caught by Wilcox. Close to the marker, it'll be third down and one. He did die for it. You just may not have seen it. Bryant, one of six on third down. Savannah State, two of six. So the defense is playing great so far. Brandon Allen's going to get it. He dives. He's going to lose two yards. And Bryant is going to be closing in on ten minutes of possession. And I do believe they are out of field goal range. The kickers are not very good in this dynasty. Luckily, I have rec uh, recruited some kickers for some of these teams. Fourth and three, they're going to go for it. Montanez under center, goal line set. Brennan Allen dropped for a one-yard gain. He doesn't get the first down. Huge stop for Savannah State. They had the momentum from the Chris Numa punt return for a touchdown, his second of the day. And now they have a little bit more momentum with a defensive stop on fourth down. Carroll under center, three running backs in the backfield. They're going to hand it off to MJ, and Cy Summers meets him in the hole. And he only gets four or five yards. Both running backs averaging 12-plus <laughs> yards per carry this season. Those are insane stats. So crazy. But, of course, the defenses are not that great for the FCS schools yet. But year two, they will be with a lot of freshmen. Second down and five. Less than a minute remaining now in the third quarter. And that's a carry for the fullback again. I don't know why they keep going to Paul Carroll. He's really been a focal point of the offense today. And they've got nothing out of it except for an interception when they threw it to him. And now a couple runs where he got nothing. So I'm not sure why they're going to Paul Carroll. They should be going to their Heisman contender, MJ Gator Jr. Like they do right here. But he is met again, this time by Owens. And they are stuffed. Fourth and four. Savannah State going to have to punt the football away. That Bryant defense is so stingy. They are just not letting up. Just constant pressure around the edges. They're not letting MJ get to the outsides. And here's LJ Telfer on the punt return from the 16-yard line. Gets it up to about the 23. Justin Ewing has injured his elbow on the play. Hopefully he's okay and can return to the ball game. We don't like to see players get injured, even though he's a non-subscriber player. We still care. 
a little bit. Four seconds left here in the third. One final play before we enter the fourth quarter. Shotgun set. Martinez draw play, and Brandon Allen gets stuffed yet again. Rayshon Griffin is fifth tackle today. That'll give him 52 on the year. And it is 24-17 heading into the fourth. Get your fours up, folks. The biggest quarter of the season is about to happen. Second and 11. Montanez under center. He'll hand it off, and oh my goodness. Allen crushed again. Only 44 yards rushing today for Bryant. They averaged 3 of 2 on the ground per game. So again, these defenses, both defenses for these teams, are playing lights out. Justin Ewing, nothing serious. Elbow bursitis, he's done for the game. He will be back for Savannah State's bowl game for whoever they're going to be facing. Montanus to throw it deep down the field, and LJ Topher can't come up with it. Hit him right in the hands. Montanus has a right to be upset right now. That was at least a 30-yard gain. Instead, Bryant is going to have to pump this football away. Savannah State with a chance to tie things up. Coleman on for the punt. From his own 18-yard line, he's stepping back there and kicks it from his six. And that is skyrocketed, oh my goodness, to the 36-yard line. Chris Numa again, Griff. oh my goodness. I thought he was gone again. He gets to the 49-yard line. Look at those stats. 35 returns, 7 for a touchdown. A fifth of his returns are for 6. Think about that for a second. Let that sink into your brain. Just, just for a minute. First and 10. Great field position. Set up by Chris Numa. Carroll going to have to throw it. Pressure. Deep shot down the right sideline. And it is not caught. Just out of the reach of Jarmel Lewis. We have yet to see him have a catch today. My goodness. There's just some, some poor timing from the quarterback to receivers today. And doesn't matter what Carroll does, he just can't correct it. Second down and 10. Give the ball to MJ. He got to. There he goes. Right up the middle. Breaks loose. Picks up the first down. 13-yard carry. And every time he touches the football, I mean, he can score at any given moment. This guy's a monster. A couple hundred more yards, and he'll have 3,000 total yards from the halfback position. First and 10. Carroll under center, two tight ends set in the I formation. They'll hand it off up the middle to MJ, and he goes nowhere, and that is Divine Adams on the tackle. That'll bring up second down and 10. That is Divine Adams' 35th tackle of the season. And that was not a tackle for a loss, but he does have 22 tackles for a loss this year. Seven sacks, three deflections, a forced fumble, and two recovered. And here the Tigers give the football off to Paul Carroll, the fullback. Yet again. And Capers, who had the pick earlier, gets called for it. That'll bring up second down and three. Scott Goldberg, the head coach, talking to the ref on the sideline, wondering why that was called on his player. Well, you can't put your hand on his face mask. It's that simple, Scott. Second down and three. Shotgun set. Gator to the right of Jeremy Carroll. Matt Meeks in at tight end. You got to target that big guy. Carroll, quick pass, and he overthrows Schmidt on the sideline just a little bit. He's so off with his timing today. It doesn't matter who he's throwing it to. He's had one really good pass today, and that was to MJ coming out of the backfield. Third down. They are 2 of 7 today. It's third and 3. I formation set. 421 remaining in the game. Carroll, toss play. MJ tries to cut it back and goes nowhere. Owens coming from the other side of the field. To track him down at the 29 yard line. They might be in field goal range, but I think it's just on the edge of field goal range for Muhammad. So they're going to go for it. Fourth down and three. Biggest play of the game so far. They're down by a touchdown. They're going to hand it off to the fullback again. He gets the first down. That's the backup fullback, though. Number 23, I think it's Mark Wart. They have like five fullbacks on the roster. It's hard to keep track. Oh my goodness, what a play. Instead of trusting 
their star halfbacks they give it off to the backup fullback that is crazy first down and 10 shotgun set fullback and a halfback with Carroll high snap and it disrupts the timing of the play Reuben Blueberry with his 11th sack actually they only have him credited with one sack today so that'll be his 10th I could have swore he had a sack earlier in the game guys I'm just saying but Reuben Blueberry uh, apparently with his 10th sack of the game or the year That'll bring up second down at 16. That was an awful snap, and that is basically why he was sacked. Carroll to throw it. Deep shot towards the end zone for Jarmel. Or not Jarmel, it was Zay Jones. And overthrows his target yet again. Poor timing all game long. And it has resulted in a lot of missed opportunities for this Tigers offense. Two of eight on third downs. It's third and 16, though. They need at least five yards to get in field goal range for Muhammad to be safe. Carroll to throw. He's hit as he throws it. Almost picked off by Tadian Moss. They keep testing him, and they keep failing that test. It is fourth and 16. A field goal from here would be 47 yards. Muhammad probably doesn't have the leg for that. So they're going to go for it. Shotgun set. MJ in the backfield. Carroll to throw it. Pressured, and that pass hits the grass as Reuben Blueberry applies the pressure on Jeremy Carroll. Blueberry and Divine Adams celebrating there at the 30-yard line. Huge play for the defensive lineman and the Bulldogs as a whole. 3-10 remaining. Savannah State needs a stop here. High formation for the Bulldogs. National Championship on the line. They need a couple first downs. Brandon Allen still up, and he'll pick up maybe five yards off the left tackle. And that will bring up second down and five. This is going to be a very exciting finish, folks. If you're out of popcorn, I mean, you're out of luck. Because you can't get up. Less than three minutes remaining. Montanez from the shotgun. Allen next to him. Two tight ends set. They're going to hand it off to Allen. He breaks a tackle. He's still going. He's got the first down. Breaking another tackle. Carrying defenders up to the 48-yard line. He's had the ball 18 times today for only 55 yards. But that is the biggest first down of the ball game. My goodness. What a run from Brandon Allen. And he needs one more yard to get to 2,100 rushing yards on the season. I formation. Tick, tick, tick. 2.15 left in the game. Montanez going to hand it off. Allen on the counter. He's taken down, but that's a face mask. And that's going to tack on five yards. Rayshon Griffin, instead of having a tackle for a loss, gives them free yardage. Seth Maddox. <laughs> Seth Maddox is livid right now. Oh, my goodness. Mental mistakes throughout the game has really cost the Tigers a lot today. And it just might cost them a trip to the national championship game. First down and five. Shotgun set. Oh, my goodness. The defensive tackle jumped off sides. And that's going to be a first down. Oh, my goodness. I feel bad for Seth Maddox right now. Oh, my goodness gracious. 154 left. The Tigers had to call a timeout there. They're just shooting themselves in the foot right now. Goal line set. And Allen still up, still going. What is happening on this play? Breaking tackles, but he went back four yards. Oh, my goodness. Tigers call a timeout. Chris Newman on the tackle for a loss. That's his fourth tackle for a loss this season as he ran from the opposite side of the field. That'll bring up second out of 14. Baker on fire, the outside linebacker. And the fullback, non-subscriber fullback gets the carry, picks up five yards. And they'll give him credit for six, actually. That'll bring up third down and 18 as the Bulldogs are running as much of this clock down as possible. They're one of eight on third downs this in this game. They need a first down here to end it. Tigers, plenty of time left for them in this electrifying offense. 
Montanez in the shotgun. Allen to his right. And they're going to go with a pass here. Montanez throws it over the middle. It's caught by LJ Topher. And folks, that might do it. Oh my goodness. What a throw and what a catch. So clutch from LJ Topher. The 6'6", 220 pound athletic receiver beats the star cornerback, Chris Numa. Oh my goodness. Chris Numa's got to be sick right now. Only one timeout left. I don't think the Tigers have a chance of getting the ball back, folks. But we'll see. As we're now under a minute left in the game. High formation for the Bulldogs. Montanez going to hand it off. Brandon Allen. And he gets taken down for no gain. Actually a loss from Rayshawn Griffin. His 15th tackle for a loss this year. Not bad for a middle linebacker. They do call their final timeout. There's 47 seconds left. And I'm pretty sure Bryant can just run this clock out now. They are in victory formation. I'm in shock right now, guys. The Bryant Bulldogs have beat the number one Savannah State Tigers for the ACC championship and they're gonna go they're gonna go and take on the Fresno State Bulldogs for the national championship and you gotta think Brandon Allen's gonna win the Heisman now that his team has won this game and he's gonna break a tackle here and this clock is gonna run out folks Bryant Bulldogs your ACC champions of year one of our FCS dynasty. Congratulations to Noel Montanez, Brandon Allen, AJ Jordan, LJ Telfer, Snoopy Tucker, Kenneth Harrington, that's the offense. Uh, Divine Adams, Ruben Blueberry, Stefan Okafor, Cy Summers, and Tadian Moss as the Bryant Bulldogs go 9-0 in the ACC and head out <laughs> to the national championship game versus the Fresno State Bulldogs, which is gonna be the Rose Bowl. Oh my goodness. Seth Maddox has to be sick to his stomach right now. All the missed opportunities today for this squad. Oh my goodness. The Tigers are gonna head out to the Gator Bowl instead of the national championship game. Unreal. <laughs> Just an insane game. Not a lot of offense. The defense has played fantastic throughout the whole game. Except for that final play where Chris Numa gets beat by LJ Topher. I did not think I was going to see that today. Jeremy Carroll, very poor performance. MJ Gator Jr. was stuffed all game long. Four broken tackles, but nothing for him. He did have a reception for 22 yards. That was his 25th reception on the season. They got him to 594 yards, receiving with nine touchdowns. Rayshon Griffin, nine tackles, six for a loss. That gives him 56 tackles on the year with 19 tackles for a loss. I don't know why I was saying 15. He must have had more tackles for a loss than I saw. Numa with two tackles today. That gives him 36. Oh, my God. I'm still in shock, guys. Head on over to our Discord community. 67 members strong. I hope to see as many of you guys there as possible. I'd like us to get to 150 by year's end. And I'd like people to be a little more active in there as well. Montanez played good enough for his team to win. Brandon Allen, 48 yards on 22 carries with a touchdown today. And that touchdown gives him 34 touchdown runs on the year, which is five more than MJ Gator Jr., but MJ has three more touchdown receptions than Brandon Allen and 370 more receiving yards than Allen. So it could go either way in the Heisman, uh, the Heisman voting. Ruben Blueberry with a sack. They only gave him credit for one. I could have swore he had two today. But Matt Capers with that pick six. Oh my goodness. The offense for Savannah State was just not good today. Chris Numa scored their only two touchdowns. Just think about that for a minute. No offensive touchdowns 
for the Savannah State Tigers, led by Jeremy Carroll and MJ Gator Jr. That's it, folks. Capers, Coleman, Allen, players of the game for Bryant, Numa, Ortiz, and Griffin, players of the game for Savannah State. And that's it from Jacksonville, Florida, and the ACC Championship game. I will see you guys tomorrow uh, with the recap and taking a look at the nation and the Heisman Trophy winner and all the other award winners around the country. Bryant, ACC champions, headed out to the Rose Bowl to take on the Fresno State Bulldogs. I'll see you guys next week with the bowl games. Take it easy.